Good Friday morning to you, church. Uh, Brother Matt here again. It's a uh, casual Friday. Uh, today we're going to look at Acts chapter 10. Um, and in Acts chapter 10, we're introduced to Cornelius, uh, a centurion. Uh, now, centurions were non-commissioned officers of the Roman army. Uh, they commanded a hundred soldiers and had the same level of authority uh, as a captain in the United States Army would have. Uh, every uh, reference uh, to centurions in the New Testament is positive. Uh, these men were the backbone of the Roman army and well respected uh, in their ranks. Uh, Cornelius was a career military officer, a leader, and a devout man of God. Uh, he said, the Bible says he's, he's a God fearer. He's a Gentile. He's probably, you know, still eating, you know, Gentile food, uh, but he attends and supports the synagogue and he keeps the moral laws, the Ten Commandments. Uh, he's generous to those in need and he prayed to the God of Israel. Uh, that says a lot about who this man is. Uh, from God's perspective, uh, Cornelius was uh, generous to the people and his continued prayers were recognized and acknowledged by God, which is an indication that uh, his heart is right before God. So what message did the angel bring to Cornelius? Uh, God has heard your prayers and he is pleased. Well, what a great message. We all need to hear messages like that from God, amen? Uh, Cornelius uh, was a good man who did the right things. However, he did not understand the truth about Jesus, and he had not received the Holy Spirit. He believed in the God of the Jews, uh, but he wasn't saved until he accepted Jesus and received uh, the Holy Spirit. Um, what did Peter see in his vision? Now, Peter has this vision, and it's an interesting vision, uh, this sheet uh, that contained all kinds of uh, four-footed animals, both clean and unclean, as described in Leviticus 11, uh, is, is dropped down in his, uh, in his dream and his vision. Uh, the message that God was trying to convey uh, to Peter uh, uh, using this sheet as an illustration was that these animals are all suitable for eating. Uh, and how did you know, Peter respond to the Lord's command to kill and eat? Like, he's like, no way, I'm not going to eat that stuff. I've never eaten that stuff. I'm not going to start today. It's very similar to the same way he responded to Jesus when Jesus wanted to wash his feet, right? Uh, you're not going to wash my feet, Jesus. But, you know, that he eventually gave in. Um, why was the sheet lowered three times? Well, uh, Peter's strong Jewish dietary restrictions were an obstacle uh, to him ministering directly to the Gentiles. Um, and, and they were on their way to, to visit him. Uh, if he hadn't had this vision, he may have turned uh, these visitors away. Uh, his biases were so uh, strongly ingrained that, that God repeated this vision three times to make sure Peter um, was able to comprehend the magnitude of this cultural change. Uh, imagine Peter's reaction upon seeing an unclean animal in the sheet, like a pig, for example. You know, when we talk about the prodigal son, um, anybody that heard that uh, that parable that was a Jew would have cringed to know that a, a, a young Jewish man was in a pigsty uh, desiring the food that pigs uh, were eating. Um, for Peter... It did away with the clean, unclean, you know, distinction of food. Remember what Jesus said in Matthew, it is not uh, what goes into the mouth that defiles a person, but what comes out of the mouth, this defiles a person. You know, the Bible says, out of the overflow of the heart, the mouth speaks. The things that come out of our mouths is what defiles us. See, God is getting rid of, rid of all these dietary laws of the Old Covenant. He's preparing to usher in the New Covenant uh, with this lack of dietary restrictions. Again, in Mark, Jesus said, Don't you see that nothing that enters a person from the outside can defile them? For it doesn't go into their heart, but into their stomach and then out of the body. In, in saying these things, Jesus declared, All foods clean. Now, are all foods good for you? No, but they're all clean. 
uh, unclean food was at the top or near the top of the list of uh, the basic issues that you know alienated Jews from Gentiles. Uh, the Lord's uh, decree that the animals and the sheep were now considered clean freed Peter uh, from the social and cultural stigma of entering uh, a Gentile's home and eating with him. You can imagine, you know, walking into someone's home and they put food down before you and you go, I'm not eating that. That would be rude. Uh, when I went to Africa in 2001 with my friend Alfred Colombo, uh, we went to his mother's village uh, out near Lake Kariba, the largest man-made lake in the world, feeds Victoria Falls, uh, and they fed us a meal. Uh, I would have insulted not only his family, but I would have insulted my friend if I had not eaten the food they put before me. Just food for thought. Now, Cornelius may have been a Gentile, but uh, how did the Jews regard him? Uh, they looked at him as he was a righteous man and a God-fearing man. And that says a lot about a person's character when the opposition respects him. You know, our opposition includes the worldly, secular people around us, including those who openly oppose uh, Christianity. And like Cornelius, what are some of the ways that we can you know, get our opposition uh, to respect us? Well, how about this? How about respecting their free will to live the life they choose? You know, we all have a free will. God gave us that free will. Uh, we can't change anyone. That's the Holy Spirit's job. My, my job is not to change someone. My job is to share the good news of Jesus Christ with someone. My job is to love them. Uh, just the way they are. And that's the other thing that we can do. We can love them just the way they are. That's how Jesus did it, you know. And, and when God gives us an opportunity to witness to them, then we do that with gentleness and kindness. Amen. Well, I hope today that God will bless you. I hope that you have a great weekend. Uh, don't forget Dad's uh, video tomorrow. And then we will see you again on Sunday. I'll... Uh, you know, put some better clothes on for our Sunday worship. But uh, as always, um, be safe, uh, be healthy, and stay in Christ's arms. We'll talk to you later. Bye-bye.